This is breaking news. We've got breaking news on jobs for the month of June and we see that the uh, unemployment rate, uh, or at least the build in jobs, is uh, 7,300. Uh, that was against the call of a decline in some measure. It wasn't as positive as the Combank call. The unemployment rate sits at 6% versus the expectation uh, that it would rise to 6.1. So we get a build of 7,300 jobs in June. Uh, versus the call of either a flat, if not a negative read. There were some optimists, the likes of Combank, that were calling out 10,000 uh, jobs added to the economy. That didn't quite occur. 7,300, not far off, though. The breakdown on those numbers and also the participation rate coming in at 64.8, and that is a slightly stronger participation rate than was expected. The call was for 64.7. Again, that is just one... Uh, point though difference and the full-time employment for June 24,500 which seems quite extraordinary in terms of a full-time versus part-time breakdown just to mention again the unemployment rate sits at 6% for June that's as the economy adds 7,300 jobs uh, that is uh, ahead of estimates in large measure the Bloomberg consensus uh, amongst their economists was for zero uh, net new jobs in the month. But of course, the previous uh, month we saw a, quite a, a buoyant addition of something like 45,000. So some payback had always been expected. Simon Bolton is from Aqualis. He's with me in studio. Simon, welcome. Uh, your thoughts on this one. Let's work our way down. We were saying just before, indeed, we came on air, don't get too obsessed with just one month's read, but from a headline perspective, encouraging to have stayed static. I think it is, and you know, the trend is still job creation. You know, today's figure only being 7,000 jobs up does, I think, sit next to that very large increase that you mentioned last month, which I think was closer to 50,000 jobs. Um, so, look, I think a benign read from a short-term perspective, but we're still showing a trend of unemployment remaining steady, and that peak that people have been talking of around the sort of mid fives, sorry, mid sixes, is something I don't think that is going to occur. It's just when's it actually going to start going the other way? What's making you confident in saying that, just out of interest? Because it's still sort of a base case RBA scenario. Even though it is taking longer than they, have, they themselves imagined, they haven't recast it. Or might they do so into perhaps the statement of monetary policy into the future? Look, possibly, I think confidence needs to be looked at, that rebalancing of where the jobs are actually being created and where they're being lost. Mm -hmm. you know, the services and healthcare industries continue to create jobs in excess of what they're losing jobs in the mining sectors. Mm -hmm. And it seems that this, these service sectors are really going to be where the growth in jobs is going to come from. Mm -hmm. And 70% of the economy here is in that services sector. So despite the mining sort of f fanatics, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, the, obsession we have with mining, which is where all of the good news has sat for, sat for the last few years. You know, this services area, the services sector, I think we're looking at you know, outweighing the job losses that we're seeing. The dollar, incidentally, going up about 15 bips following this one, so a rising and appreciating Australian dollar story. Uh, let's look at the breakdown. Can you quite believe this uh, full-time employment component, 24,500? A lot of the metrics are still decidedly treading water, not least of all the NAB business survey. They don't suggest there's really a discernible shift into that full-time v part-time space. Because mm. in the event, we've seen uh, just on 17,200 part-time roles taken out of play mm -hmm. this month. Again, how to... How to decipher that now. So I think that participation rate going up is another sign that you know, as the unemployment rate goes down, we do have more people in the job market. Uh, I think that, that we're still seeing this flattening trend. I think that there's been this obsession about the unemployment rate kicking through the ceiling and it just really isn't happening. Mm -hmm. So it's that maintenance of a low or very slowly increasing unemployment rate that's going to be important to us mm -hmm. at the moment. 5.1 million aggregate hours worked in the month. Off the top of your head, what does that signal as far as a trend, maybe a rolling three-month uh, series? Mm -hmm. Is that consistent uh, with, with, that, with that, that, those latest reads? Yeah, releases? I think we have been seeing those hours increase right. as you know, organisations start to get tighter, as confidence increases, you know, they're doing the same with less people. Mm -hmm. So those hours are looking like they will pick up. And that probably to an extent as well is where the part-time figures increase as well. Mm -hmm. So there has been a bigger use of part-time employees as the uncertainty has been there. Is, and yet we are talking about a, a structural economic yeah, shift, yeah. are we not? So to that extent, 
in your eye, health as, as it were, the sector to shine, where yeah. most demand is, is, to, is going to be emerging from. For how long, incidentally, how long do you make that projection as, as remaining valid for? Is this a 10-year call, uh, realistically? I mean, with, with the ageing population, I think it is a steady, um, you know, steady area of the workforce that will increase. Yeah. You know, it's added 90,000 jobs in the last 12 months. Yeah. You know, the mining sector has lost 34,000 jobs. So you can see the sort of you know, real big difference between the creation in the services sector yeah. and the decline in the mining sector. And the profile of those jobs tends to be what? Are you seeing more roles putting out, put out there, as it were, in, in a part-time capacity, or they are for the long run? that they are full-time. Yeah, these are mainly full-time jobs. I think that the health sector does have a large part of its workforce in that part-time area. But, you know, this job creation is permanent and it is happening in that healthcare sector and looks like it's very, very sustainable. And is there the, as it were, the skill set to meet demand? Because you talked about the, the falling off from the mining boom. Those people don't have necessarily the ability to just transition. No. into a services health type role no, sure. in the mines. I mean, one of the other areas that is also increasing is the infrastructure construction. That has been buoyed by the housing market at the moment. So those construction skills are probably more aligned with the mining skills that we're seeing you know, displaced. Um, the healthcare, yes, there is, that skill shortage will start to bubble up. I think that you know, it always does come after a high period of, or a high period of not using these people, suddenly everybody rushing in for the same skills at the same time does create you know, that shortage of people. So that will, I think, happen over the course of the next three, four months. A word on the participation rate again. You've got this situation, as you've acknowledged, of an ageing population. So fewer people in that regard are, are, are presenting as being willing or able, mm -hmm. relatively, uh, as every month goes by. That's, yeah. That number's falling away. So you need the net migration to, to augment, yeah. to do that. Are you getting a sense that those numbers remain on track, or are we looking at actually a, you know, net declines, even, mm. in the projected figures that we would be hitting at this point in the cycle yeah. for I'm the migration? I'm not sure what the projections are on the migration right. numbers. Certainly they're going up. Mm. Um, so whether or not that people exiting the workforce will be made up by the people entering the workforce, you know, that will be an interesting mm. thing to watch. But the, you know, this demand of us looking at this unemployment rate as this nemesis that's going to you know, destroy us, I just don't think is going to be real at the moment. You know, if it does get under that 6% level, I think we really have got something to celebrate. And let's bear in mind, the unemployment rate really under 5%, 5.5%, you're looking at almost full employment here. So we're not far off where we need to be. It all assumes, of course, that the ABS's numbers, <laughs> ultimately, even when you extrapolate across 12 months, make eminent good sense. And you know as well as anyone that mm. this is a series been played with uh, problems, you know, not just yeah, yeah. For, for the odd month. It's kind of an, an endemic, isn't it? It is, but I think that those issues were addressed earlier in the year. I think the ABS was very quick to um, you know, put some admission behind the numbers, being a bit confused. You know, the new metrics that they then used have, I think, eased the concerns that economists and other market commentators have had. So I'm not sure if that will still have a, you know, a big part to play in how factual these figures are. I think everybody is much more confident that we're closer to what the real number is. OK. Simon, what, to your mind, does all of this offshore volatility spell for even hiring intentions. And could I go the next step and say, you know, how do you judge, say, in the health sector, the willingness of corporates who might have seen Australia as an attractive destination to even have a base? Mm -hmm. Does that start to, because of our proximity to this very, very volatile region, now all look slightly doubtful? Or you think we, we are on track maybe to, to garner some, something in the way of something significant? I think the healthcare and services businesses do tend to be homegrown. You know, the mining boom was, yes, short. Sure, it's the Australian organisations that are leading it, but there was lots of foreign investment there as well. You know, the Chinese investments in Australia, we're seeing that increase, so that should support some of that as well. So my take is that we just need to see this unemployment rate maintain its level in the low sixes. You know, if we can get below that 6%, that's great. Continued job creation, 7,000 jobs is still 7,000 jobs. You know, as long as we're having a positive read on those, again, I think the news is going to continue to be good. Thoughts about the, the, the regional breakdown, or at least the national breakdown, rather? It, it's sort of tried to say WA's you know, got its own problems mm. now, officially in a recession, if you take the two consecutive quarter yeah, analogy. Yeah. Do, do you sort of see something like health as being almost recession proof that maybe demand even in that part of the, the country mm -hmm. is, is pretty okay? Yeah, I would think so. 
It, it is recession tolerant, certainly. Yeah. Um, New South Wales still leading the way with job creation. I think you know, Baird's um, commitment to these large infrastructure projects is going to have a big part to play in that. Um, and I think that's the other thing will offset some of these job losses elsewhere, is people that are going to get into this building schools, um, building transport networks, building roads. Um, you know, it's those sorts of PPP style activities as well that are going to drive the employment numbers up. Thank you, as always, Tone. Appreciate no problem, Carson. Good we'll to see you. See you.